Talking with Topher, episode 217. And TWT fans, it is so good to be back on this May 30th, 2024. And as always, I'm so glad to see so many of you coming back for more. Uh, before I get into anything today, let me start off the way I always do by saying thank you. Thank you to all of my subscribers. You're what keeps me coming back here week after week. If you're new to the podcast, remember to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, everybody. It's the most important thing you can do for the podcast. It really does help. So leave comments, give thumbs up. All of that interaction helps the podcast grow, and I need your help to be doing it. If you want your opportunity to tell your story, maybe there's a story that needs to be told, or you want to be a guest, well, then you got to send out an audio video or type it out, but you got to send an email to T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. That's the official email of the podcast. And of course, down in the description below, you'll find the Linktree link. That's going to give you everything TWT. Go ahead and click that. Check out all the social platforms, follow and subscribe. And then of course, copy that link and share it with everybody you know. And with all that out of the way, we can get into today's podcast, everybody. I'm not going to do what I normally do and ramble on and on and on and on and on. We're just going to get into it today. All right? I got a guest for you all. A returning guest. My very first guest. This guy is amazing. Um, He's taught me so much over almost the last decade. Um, And it was a real honor to have him come back in and sit back down with me. So, without further ado, my guest, Rick Genghis Hahn. All right, what is happening, everybody? It is so good to have you back on the podcast. Uh, Everybody, my guest today is Rick Hahn, who is a repeating uh, guest, and actually, you were my very first guest so it is really good to have you back i believe we recorded almost two and a half years ago yeah isn't that crazy how how time flies um but you have been man i don't know too many people that do what you do and what you do is so impressive to me so you what it let's just start with what it takes at this age to do what you do today, getting into a bare knuckle ring. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it's definitely not normal uh, for someone my age. Um, I, I don't feel, or my age, I, I guess I or I don't feel as old as I maybe should, as the average person the average person does. Um, you know, I just I'm, I'm I stay active. I'm, I work out and and I feel I can still. I can still do this, right? So why not? Just keep going. Just keep going? Yeah. So what 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 pushes you to this? Because I know you were doing some MMA. You've done some grappling tournaments, right? Some jujitsu. And what what is the um what's the word I'm looking for? What what in what brings you into this world now? Um I think it's easier. Really? In some some aspects, right? So MMA is is you know you gotta you gotta do everything you gotta do jujitsu wrestling kickboxing all that um that's taxing on the body and and not get older like like me uh, I don't know I'm much older than you I think um, uh I'm 44 uh, yeah three years three years yeah I was gonna say it wasn't much between us so. yeah um so I mean that's it's it was easier 10 years ago right um uh, now it's it's a little harder the more injuries and, and things like that um so. Uh, my thought process was uh, if I was into MMA, right, it's three five minute rounds at least, right? So okay, um, that's you know that's that's five five minutes doing all that stuff is is pretty pretty tiring. 
Um, yeah. Just the, uh, yeah. The bare knuckle thing. Uh, the main reason why I decided to do it was because it was two minute rounds. Oh, really? Yeah. Was, oh, is it five or is it five, just three? Five, five two minute rounds with with, oh. a, with a minute break in between. Oh. So I was like, two minute rounds. That's that's nothing. Like, I mean that that goes fast. Yeah, it goes very fast. And I only have to worry about boxing. I don't have to worry about any ground. So stuff. there's no groundwork and a bare knuckle. It is Not straight that. up boxing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was a curious bit about that. More uh, rules. Um, Less limiting than like regular boxing and like clinch stuff, but it, yeah, there's no ground stuff. Right? There's no ground stuff. You're not allowed to do any kicking or no. anything like that. Okay, not, so nothing. you do have to keep it yeah. fists only. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. So I mean, that was that was the main thing. I was like, well, two minute rounds, I could I could do that, and then I don't have to worry about anything else. And uh, yeah, it's bare knuckle. Um, <sighs> but uh, now it's not really bare bare knuckle you are wrapping but it's just the wraps no it's, no it's, it's bare knuckle oh i thought i saw wraps your, on your, your hand your wrists are up up to the knuckle are wrapped oh oh yeah. is that what i saw yeah. okay so yeah. you're you're wrapping the wrist yeah so that it doesn't tweak it, on you yeah i thought it would actually be a little bit tighter than what it was but it's it wasn't it still moved but it, oh there was some padding in there with it so no i think shit. it does help though with with the the movement the limiting the movement of, of your wrist a little bit now, now, like MMA, um, like you have Combat Zone, you have UFC. What branch of bare knuckle is this? As my understanding, it's the big. There's there's several organizations that do like a bare knuckle uh-huh. thing. This I think is the biggest one out there. So, so is this the one that Connor bought into? Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, really? No shit. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that that's was actually kind of a, a like a week before I think my my fight happen um he he had signed that which you know i, I thought it was was gonna be pretty cool and who knows what it's gonna do in terms right. of popularity or or bring more sponsorship yeah, yeah, yeah awareness of the of the pro the show and stuff so i think that ben, okay ben and this is also the same branch that mike perry is like the king of right now exactly like so now where 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 you got involved is this is this more of um like a bucket list thing for you or are you going further with this now uh no i wouldn't say it was i never thought i would actually do it I, oh really I mean, that's I, cool that's I, cool I, man I, I, I looked at it i was like oh those people are crazy you're like no, right man. yeah so i mean look at mike perry dude he, well, yeah, he, <laughs> he's a fucking he, savage he's a, he's a nutball he's yeah a, he is a nut job but um <laughs> um yeah so it fits his his personality right the battle yeah. and, and you, you see some of the, the fighters that do it and it's yeah they're 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 they're, they're a little out there i think yeah but, um, yeah uh but i guess i am too uh, to some degree um but uh yeah i mean it wasn't a bucket list i was like you know what the the, the main reason was it was shorter rounds but it also paid about three times as much money as like a local mma fight would um, oh, so like, yeah, all right. Well, it's kind of a win-win then, right? So, yeah. Um, and that was the only reason I had some parameters. I wanted to stay within in terms of if I'm going to be signed. I need to get paid this much. Oh, okay. I'm not going to do bare knuckle for peanuts. Well, no- I mean, the injuries that come with bare knuckle are incredibly brutal. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't care what anybody says, man. You see the pictures after a bare knuckle fight compared to an MMA, and you're like, holy Jesus Christ, are those... Scar is gonna heal. One, one there was a there was a girl fight, a uh, woman fight there, and I mean, she was like after the fight talking to the camera, and she was just mangled. And you're like, holy shit, dude! Yeah, the, the cuts obviously your your knuckles are fairly sharp, right? Like, um, I can't say that I know what it's like to get hit, right? Because I didn't I, no, in my yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of wanted to just to, to feel that, but yeah, it's it's. That was another reason why I was like, you know, if I don't get paid, uh, if you don't pay me what I kind of want, then right. I'm not, I'm not going to sign. So. Exactly, exactly. So. That makes total sense, but the money has to be worth it. But the best part is, is that you didn't get to feel it, even though you just hinted that you wanted to, which is an interesting feeling to have. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean- when, when I said earlier about the people are a little tapped, maybe yeah. um, maybe, maybe I am too a little bit. Right? <laughs> a little bit, man. Yeah. I do have to say that, like, you know, um, I, I've never taken a punch like you have, but I've gotten knocked around on the jujitsu mats, and I, I 
Sometimes you're like, oh, it wasn't as bad as I anticipated it. You know, when you accidentally get a hand or an elbow or something hits you, you're like, oh, okay, maybe I could take that. But like to actually be in a bare knuckle fight and being, you know, how, I don't know if it was a thought per se while you were in there, but a thought per se probably before is, hey, I wonder what that's going to feel like, you know, I know if it happens, I'll be prepared for it. So, right. I mean, adrenaline out there is, is when you're in there is, yeah. is that makes makes a big difference. You know, in MMA, I know I've been hit solid and you can tell if it doesn't like rock you, you're like, oh, that's uh, yeah, you immediately feel some swelling and stuff, and you're like, "Oh, that's gonna leave a mark." But um, yeah, the the bare knuckle, I you know, I, from what I've seen, it that it can do some. It can do yeah. some damage, and I do have to say that, like showing um show showing your uh, actual like uh, fight here, because what I did was is I pulled this up and um era eval what <laughs> don't you love that? All right, maybe if I refresh it. There we go. So this is, well, it says it's seven minutes, so I'm assuming that it's like the whole fight. And we, we can go, we can go, yeah, so it's got you coming up. I mean. Oh, I haven't seen this. Uh, oh, you haven't seen this? I haven't seen this version of it with the walkout and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So so I, I purchased this. Pretty crazy, bro, man. It, 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 it's, it's pretty cool. Hold on, let me make that bigger for everybody else there. There you go, everybody. So, I mean, this is just fucking badass, dude. Yeah. To say that you did this, man, is really cool. It was cool. I mean, they, they put on a great production. There's, I think, 6,000 people at Mohegan. It was, it was a full house. I, yeah. I was surprised at really how big, how many people showed up for that. More so than, like, at a Bellator event that I've been there. Really? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's so crazy. And now Bellator's dead, right? Uh, PFL bottom. P PFL bottom. Yeah. Uh, everybody's calling it PFL slash Bellator right now. Yeah. For some reason, we can't let names die. It's just like everybody calling X Twitter still. Yeah. I don't. I don't understand it. Just call it what it is. If they change, they change, right? Right. But um, let's see if we can get into it. Because this is this is, and that was an opponent change as well. I wasn't. Actually. You were an opponent change. Yeah, you didn't know that. No. Yeah. I oh, I had no idea, dude. Let me tell you the story. Hit pause in there. Oh, I will hit pause, and we'll go full screen. So, uh, my original opponent uh, was this with this other guy who's actually shorter than me. Um, his name was Scott uh, Lambert or something like that um, from New York. So he, so we have you have your medicals that you have to turn in to to get checked. Yeah. So he did that. Uh, and then once we did our weigh-ins, we both made weight. So I made weight at 166. Yeah, yeah. I remember you telling me that, yeah. And the weight class was 165, so that was, you know, you get, you get one pound. Uh, you get one, one pound? pound? allowance. So oh, 166. Wow. So I made 166 nice. on the dot. Um, and um, so did he. And then that later that, so that was in the morning of uh, that Friday. Okay. Right? And then in the evening, they had like the media weigh-ins where they had the cameras, and you already all fully hydrated, which you could see from my pictures. I was much bigger uh, by the media weigh-ins. But they, before that, they do um, uh, – the commission does their own medical test right before oh. the fight. So they want to make sure, okay, nothing changed in the time that you had turned in your medicals a month ago or whatever. Really? So he didn't pass his eye. They do, like, the eye thing where you, like, will read the thing, like, at an eye. Exam. Almost like a driving test. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cover one eye. What do you see? Exactly. He didn't pass that, and, and there was something off with him. Like, they, they said maybe he was, um, uh, I don't know. It just, something, something was off. So they're like, you're not going to fight, you know. And, and, and I could just talk to him. Like, he was, Yeah. Probably a good thing he didn't fight. Really? Um, but he was like a shorter, he was shorter than I was. So it would have been like a, a different type of match. Uh, that's who I was prepared for. Um, so usually in that instance, you can't get a replacement on 24 hour notice for MMA. Like it, oh. it almost never happens because, first of all, someone has to make weight and or have their medicals done. Um, so this guy, uh, uh, Steven Stengel, he's, he's a local fighter. He's fought in you know, uh, combat FC and all that for, um, every few months. Right. Um, so, uh, Rick Caldwell, who, who thankfully made this happen, who's the matchmaker for combat FC, he 
called uh, St- Stephen, I guess, who was at a barbecue at the time, like eating a burger. He said, and he's like, I can't make, you know, I'm I'm 185 at, you know, if I'm that. Um, and I was like, I don't care. Like, I will fight. What? You know, I mean, I walk around at 180, 182. Oh, okay. Like, so you could have yeah, but gotten I mean, away with yeah, that. So he was like 189, he said, or something like that. For the weight class. I just had to be within 10 pounds of 185. Oh, okay, so, okay. So all his medicals passed. He got cleared. He came down. They offered him a good chunk of money to do it. Um, and uh, I pre-fight, they weighed me right before I walked out. I weighed 184 um, as I was walking out to the ring. So Wow. Yeah. But, I mean, he was much taller, different style than what I had trained for. He was very long and rangy, and he had a lot more fights. And even though he didn't have, you know, the best record, but he, he, he had experience, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and just the fact that he's long and, and bigger, and you know, that does play. It can yeah. Be, it can be dangerous. Right? It can be dangerous. Yeah, if yeah. people have a reach on you, of course. Yeah. You can't get inside. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I remember the, the first thing I thought when we went to go touch gloves, because we're, we're touch, not gloves, but hands, uh, you're so close in, in this. You're almost, really? You're almost like touching distance when they start you. Oh, wow. Uh, and I went to like give him a fist bump, and I immediately I looked at his hand, and I have pretty big hands, but his hands were bigger than mine. I'm like, and my first thought was like, I don't want to get hit with those things. <laughs> fucking knuckles are huge. Uh, that was literally my first thought, um, and it, I, thankfully I didn't probably. Right, yeah. yeah. My God, man, that's so crazy that you, like yeah. you took this, you know, uh, 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 you were almost uh, an extra. You know, like uh, like we called in for it. Yeah. So did we ever? Did you ever find out what was wrong with him? Did he have something wrong with him? Or yeah, I don't know. His one pupil was bigger than the other. He was something was off with him. Uh, you know, so ho- hopefully he's okay. But yeah, yeah right. It's it probably better that he didn't. I mean, I in my mind, it would have been the same result. So so what? How many different little tests do you have to go through? Before they clear you medically, so it's I and it depends on the on the state. It depends on the state, so, so it's all developed. Okay, Connecticut all right. is like the most strict state in the country. Really, I thought New York was New York. It depends, uh, C- California, uh, uh, Connecticut, um, Maine, not really. New Hampshire, they don't give a shit. Like, yeah, blood work and eyes. That's it. Oh, okay, um, all for right. The most part, like Ma- Massachusetts is another one. So I had to get all my medicals done, and if you're over forty. I had to get um, um, uh, what do you call it? MRI. MRI, okay. The brain scan. Brain um, scan, yeah. I had to yep. do that last time I did Fought in the Mass as well. But I never had to do a stress test before. And, and Oh, I right, had, for your heart. Yeah. Yep, my dad just had one of those done. Yeah, mm-hmm. I th- and I thought it was easy from what people said, but it was actually kind of hard because you're, you're sprinting on an tread, inclined treadmill and it keeps getting faster and faster until your heart rate reaches, reaches a certain point yeah but if you're in really good shape it takes longer to get there oh <laughs> so it was uh isn't that weird if you're in shape it takes longer to get there because your heart's used to right so it's gonna beat at a lower rate like if you're not in shape it's gonna get to the higher rate quicker right interesting so huh. yeah that for, makes sense for my age i think they said it had to be like a 100 147 beats oh okay um you know so i'm sprinting on this thing and it's like is that is they get the the breather on you or no, you just just, open, just hooked open, up to just hooked up okay to, to different uh, electrode things so. yeah because I've seen some stress tests like uh, Ben Greenfield does a lot of that work and he does all those inclines and those type of tests and he had one where he was breathing mechanism and the it's whole like thing a, and I think it really that's like a VO two VO two test okay yeah. so there's so many. Yeah. Different things out there that uh, that that checks your 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 oxygen, I think, or intake or output or whatever. Interesting, interesting. So you had to go through all those tests, and yeah. and and then you you get into the ring with yeah. this guy. And well, if people don't know what's happened, you're about to see it because it is absolutely. It, it you gotta don't blink, everybody. Don't blink. Let me make sure I got to the actual. Let me see here. So did you actually fight yet? No. This is just bouncing around. Do, 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 do. Bring him in. See, look how much taller he is. Yeah, he's Bring definitely him. taller. He looks like a giant from this angle. This is so freaking, man. <laughs> to know somebody who does this uh, is, is wild to me, man. I mean, just wild. Pushing you back. Yeah, I clipped him with that same thing. I, didn't, I haven't really watched it on this big screen. 
like this. Yeah. But he he does the same thing every time he comes in. Oh, yeah. He just does that. Oh. Yeah. He, do, he does the same thing in MMA. He'll, except he couldn't kick. He just lunges forward like that, and that's what we were counting on. Uh, nice shot. Wow, really? Apparently, it, it fractured his cheekbone. Shut up, dude. Yeah, that, that's what he had said. So. Wow. I don't know. Let me see if they, uh, they're they going to do uh, instant he, replay. <laughs> Look at that smile, bro. Totally fucking earned. So, yeah, the slow-mo, you can really see the the impact. And you can hear it, too. It was, it was uh... As he pushes you back here, I'm going to turn the sound back on just so we can try to hear it. Got back out of the range, ready for his time to come forward. The problem is, Hawk is athletic. Right there, man. Boom! I always say it's that one that you don't see that does the damage. It was definitely the left. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the, the, the left. The uppercut landed a little bit. A little bit, yeah. But it was the other one. But still, man, that must have been the best 27 seconds of your life right there. Like that, uh, To me, that is that is amazing. It's absolutely amazing, and that was worth all $7. Yeah. <laughs> That was worth all seven dollars, dude. I yeah. mean, it's just it it's for 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 me as as a student who has worked under you, been trained by you and everybody else at uh, Professional Martial Arts Academy. It is just something that I I I'm like a little kid right now. I'm like so excited because it's like I can't I can't fathom doing that on my own. Um, or, or doing anything like that because I'm just like I don't I don't have it in me. But to be sitting across from somebody who I've worked with for so long now, I think we've known each other for over nine years now, At least. Um, just through school and and hanging out doing this. But I mean, it is just it's so impressive to me. And to mm -hmm. see this, you know, the last MMA fight you had, that guy jump guard and got all over you, and it was. It was it was it was something to 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 watch and learn from, but to see this, this is what I've, this is what I knew you could do. And when it when it happened, man, I was just like so blown away and so proud and happy and just like happy for you. You know what I mean? Because, yep. I mean, you just you keep going into the fire. You know, I, I, I a little bit of a funny uh, the other day. Uh, I was talking to an employee and they were talking about somebody that they know that they was getting married or whatever. And they're talking about how uh, they're getting old. So they need to have kids. Now the person that they were talking about was 28. And I was just like, well, what the fuck am I then? And she's like, well, how old are you? And I go, I'm 44. And she's like, Oh, and I'm like, well, thanks. You know what I mean? Like, I, I I don't I don't feel as old as I am today because of I believe the way that I treat my body and the things that we do and the the technology and the medical industry where it is at today is not quite where I wish it was but it's way better than it was when my parents were my age. Right. You look like you don't look forty eight. Right? It's 47. 47. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A couple months. All right. All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah me you too. don't either. I think but, uh, right. I don't look 44. We kind of. Good, good genes. We, we got good genes. I blame it on the menthol cigarettes I used to smoke. But I, I feel way better today uh, uh, physically than I did when I was in my 20s. You know what I mean? And we don't look like a typical almost 50-year-old. Right. Right? A typical 50-year-old when we were young looked old right and now you see people in their 60s and 70s that look like they're 50 you know and i've been told and i don't know you can take it with a grain of salt but i've been told i don't look more than like 34 yeah and i like hearing that i love being carded whenever i go places but to be at this age and to be able to be doing what you're doing today is just absolutely incredible and it's very inspiring and i am very very uh just excited for you you know what i mean i think this is absolutely awesome that was so cool um and uh, i'll i'll stop uh i'll stop with the 
with the uncomfortableness right now. But I just, I, I, man, it just, it's so cool to see. It's so cool to see. And your career has been just something to uh, look at, you know? Um, what is this? Oh, and you've done so much. You've been on the happy hour. I mean, you do so many podcasts. I've seen a couple of your interviews now. And it's just, it's, it's really cool to see everybody else um, seeing what I see. And I just, I just think you're a great athlete. You know what I mean? Um, but man, what a world, uh, to be in, you know, what a world. I never thought that I was ever going to be this involved in this, uh, this world. And it's just like, it's so exciting to be involved in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and you also play a part in it in terms of like you, we've trained together for many years and, and, you know, all that is, is, building blocks to where I am now, you know, um, you know, throughout the years in terms of everything that I've done. So, you know, I, you're, you're a part of that story as well. So, yeah, 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 that's fair. You know, I, I, you know what the other thing is too, is that like, I just feel like I understand how hard that is. I understand the work that has to be put in to get there, to do even a jujitsu competition to do any type of competing period is so extensive and so hard. And I, I say this over and over again on the podcast, but like when people click clack on their keyboards and say things to, I mean, God forbid fighters, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even know what you're thinking when you talk like that. I cannot, Hey, you want to put down an actress. You want to put down an actor. You want to, you want to say you're better than this and that. That's fine. Go right ahead. They're, they're just acting. And I know it's difficult work and it's, it's, it, it is valued. It's an art and you have to be capable of doing it. And, and they do the same thing with almost everything, right? Comedians, you can go down the whole line of everybody's, uh, uh, I guess, job. And you could say that I can do that job better, right? Be from behind a keyboard, but actually being on the mats and going through the work and doing the exercises and doing the drills and doing six minute rounds. And, you know, you get a completely different perspective on what it takes to get in there. And it's just, it's, it's mind blowing to, 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 uh, to have people on the other end of a keyboard, you know, saying, uh, you didn't fight right, or you didn't do this, or I could have knocked him out. And I'm just like, what is wrong with the people out there? Well, if you notice, they, they will be and always have been mediocre know-nothings. Right. If they've actually ever done anything slightly comparable, they would shut their mouth because they know how difficult it is yeah but they're they're ignorant and, and they're they're stupid and they're they're incapable of actually doing that it's right just, it's, it's impossible because again you don't understand until you've actually done it until you've actually stepped in there and and a lot of people can say that yeah i've done it but to what degree there's levels to everything right so there's um, so many levels and I, i'm not saying that i'm at the top level but i've i've seen and trained with the best in history in some of these sports yeah uh, my coaches and, and teammates have been literally uh hall of famers or, yeah you know, it depends on on the art so i got to witness them and, and you know their their training compared to mine was a different a different level like yeah it's just you know um and, and and not only that i had uh, a discussion with some people about the weight cut because i i had missed weight when i fought two years ago for that 165 weight class it was the first time i ever missed weight um, wow. I just had I didn't have enough time at the end of the weight cut to, to get I was rushed so um I made it this time but that was the first fight pi- first fight people don't understand like yeah I'm doing the but the first fight is to make weight like I don't care like I'm two days out I'm not really thinking about the fight no at all I'm thinking about making a weight because if I don't make weight can't fight I either don't fight or I lose a bunch of money right so um yeah, in that, yeah, and it was, this was, I, I mean, I would literally was on the dot, and I had no time left, I was, you know, to, to make this weight. And, uh, and, and that's what, that's why I keep bringing this up, because we need to get it out there that that's all they're doing. They're just, they're just typing on a keyboard. Yeah. They, they, everybody that I've talked to about getting into a ring, or getting into a jujitsu competition, or anything, when that first battle is always your weight 
Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's why I've always wondered, like, is, is the weight cutting, you know, it, I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like we do, could do something better for the athletes instead of this extensive, uh, ripping and tearing of the body before you go in there and tear each other apart. Like it just seems counterproductive sometimes with some of the massive weight cuts we've seen. And we've also seen some major, major complications with fighters because of weight cutting. And then they got rid of the IV to bring up the fluids again after the weight cut, which I think was wrong. I don't yeah. think that that's cheating. Just like I don't think using steroids in between, um, in between a fight is cheating either because it helps rebuild you. It helps recuperate you. It helps everything move along a little bit faster. And if anybody needs to be doing that to rebuild themselves before they get back into another ring or to do another fight or to do anything, I think we should be allowing them to have a certain amount in their system at the time of the fight that wouldn't, wouldn't be considered like cheating you think football players don't don't oh no they all do like if we're gonna sit here and pretend like nobody does this to better their recovery or to make them a better athlete or to do these things i don't really consider it to be cheating today i think it's almost necessity to help rehabilitate the athletes we ask this much and then when we're like, oh, you're hurt? Well, you only got this much to work with. Well, right. but you want this out of them. So what are we doing here? And why are we pretending like this doesn't do something um, more than just cause cheating? Right. I mean, if everyone's doing it, then is it cheating, right? Right. You remember the Pride days where everyone was... was, was... In the contract for Pride, it said we specifically do not test for these things. Right. And they labeled all the things. Because they wanted freak shows, and they, and they got it. And they it. got it. And it was entertaining. And it was, it was super entertaining. Yeah. Yes. You know, um, whatever, it, you know, however you feel about it, it was cool. Right? I mean, yeah. you can't not say that without saying Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, he was an absolute savage of a man Vitor Belfort all those all guys. of those yeah. guys I mean they were just monsters yeah, monsters them, yeah and you, and you could tell but it's like at the end of the day we they you get the keyboard warriors saying you can't do that you don't do good da, 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 da. and then you got people saying well steroids is cheating it's like guys we're just they're at, we're all they're all athletes you're an athlete and you need help recovering and I just I think we need to I think things do need to change for uh, recovery and all this other stuff. And the keyboard warrior thing is just something I keep bringing up because the more that we uh, hopefully talk about it and 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 put them down, the hopefully the less uh, people will listen. You know what I mean? Yeah. But people love negativity. Right. And they're, speaking of that, they're only going to continue to to. To talk crap because they're as long as they're, they're getting likes and follows. Yeah, they hide behind their keyboards and they're they're in their mom's basement and uh, eating Cheetos and um. Now, do it. you do you ever go on and look to I, see what's been? I, I used said? to. When you I, used when to I, when I first got on Bellator, like my first couple fights, I was like, oh, what are they saying? You know, because you know, it's your it's like an ego boost, mm-hmm. like, you know. Uh, but it was like a, a letdown because everyone, you know, the same thing. They're Ah, uh, you know they're, they're talking shit, you know, and uh, some of them it was a lot of it was good, most of it was good, but again, it's it's those negatives are stingers, right? And you're like, what, what the, like, you know, um, yeah, and, and and eventually I'm like, you know what? No, that's I'm not even gonna go read the comments because it's you know it, it's it's that's what it is. People just like to bitch and complain, uh, but again, who are they? They're they're nobody. So people right. who have never done it and who never will. And the one thing that I've noticed over the years of this happening to people and um, I've noticed that if you engage with a negative comment, they love that. They love that. Now they know they got you and they just they keep that going and then they turn around and use everything you said against that against you. Yeah, And it's just like it's so annoying because you're but. You know, uh, for me, I go through my comments and I go through all my stuff and people try to be negative towards me. But the thing is, is that you can't 
be as negative towards me as I've already been towards myself. So I keep that in mind when I read through my stuff and I'll like a lot of my negative comments. Yeah, laugh but, it off. And I just laugh it off. But it's different for me. I already know that I'm not the smartest person in the room. I already know that I'm not the brightest light bulb on the Christmas tree. Like you can make fun of all the stuff that I say. And yeah, I don't know words and shit like that. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm doing it. I'm pushing through and I keep recording and I keep doing what I'm doing. So yeah. it's funny that you think the exact same thing that I already thought about myself. Right. You know, well, but you're also not pretending to be uh, something that you're not. You're just doing what nah. you do. No, nah, I just, you know, my, with me, I'm like, I'm not pretending I'm a great fighter. I, yeah, I'm, I'm levels below a lot or whatever it is I'm due. You know, but I don't care. Like, I'm not trying to impress anyone or I'm doing it for myself. Yeah. I don't try to emulate or be someone I'm not. I'm just, I'm just doing my own thing. Like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. See, that's, that's what we all need to be doing. We just do our thing, pay no attention to what they're saying about what we're doing because we know what we're doing. And also when they're my age, I dare them to, to do anything close. Let's see it. Let's see it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. Now, here, here, let's have some fun, all right? So, so I have heard, and I, I, I want to hear it from you, but Ronda Rousey just released a book, and Brennan Schaub got put in it. Now, is it true that you once in your past life dated Ronda Rousey? I wouldn't. We are we are roommates. Roommates. Say date. Yeah. Yeah. We are, we we live, all live together when we used to train. That was the Olympian thing, right? Yeah. We, when I first moved here, we had a there was a house in in Wakefield. That all the athletes lived at. Um, so a bunch of us were all roommates together, and we trained and traveled and did all that. But you know that that was it. Oh, that was it. Oh, okay. I was actually her boss at Home Depot for a while too. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute! What? You worked at Home Depot and you were her boss? Yeah. So wow. At, at, after the Olympics, the Home Depot was a big sponsor, and they had like the it's called the Olympic Job Oppor O Job Olympic Job Opportunities Program. So um, what they would give you as being an Olympian is uh, because they know that you need time to train and also money. So they would pay you for forty hours of work, but you only had to work twenty hours. Oh, interesting. Um, so I, you know, I had that when I first moved out here, and I was, you know, a cashier. Then I went to head cashier, and then Rhonda, when we were training in, in Wakefield, she was a cashier. So I was technically her, her superior, <laughs> her, a little bit her boss. What? Uh, yeah. That that's funny. Okay. Well, that spreads a little bit of light on that. Yeah. Huh. But it's very interesting. I was in her first book too, but it was all. You were in her first she book? She mentioned me, but it wasn't anything negative. Oh, wow. Thankfully. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Others weren't so lucky. Uh, yeah, well, I guess uh, there was a few things said about Shab, and uh, he, he went back on it on the fighter and the kid, and he was like, no, nah, that's not how it happened. But it's just kind of funny. I was thinking about that, and then, uh, you know, that, that, that got brought up. And I, I now that uh, we just discussed that, it does sound a little bit familiar from the fir first podcast. I think it had been... It had been mentioned, but I couldn't re recall it. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, but uh, so what I have been getting into a lot more conspiracy theories lately. Um, is there is there anything that's happening out there today that uh, that that you that you enjoy? You did, any any of the conspiracy theories you've been really digging into lately? Ah, uh, June is finally here, and it's time to slow down and soak up the summer vibes. And where better to do that than at Slowdown Clothing? Visit slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com to discover a world of laid-back beach essentials and summer styles that will have you looking and feeling cool all season long from cozy beach towels to stylish swim trunks slow down clothing has everything you need to make a splash this summer and for the little ones we've got a fantastic selection of kids hats and more 
Perfect for those family beach days. But wait, there's more. Treat yourself to a range of our trendy t-shirts, hats, pins, socks, and so much more. Express your unique style and slow down in comfort and fashion. And here's the cherry on top. Use promo code T-O-P-H-E-R at checkout and enjoy an extra 10% off your entire purchase. That's right. Save big this June at Slow Down Clothing with promo code T-O-P. H-E-R. So what are you waiting for? Embrace the summer spirit, refresh your wardrobe, and chill out in style with Slow Down Clothing. Visit slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com today. And don't forget to use promo code T-O-P-H-E-R for that exclusive 10% off your entire purchase. Slow down. Unwind and let your style shine this summer with slow down clothing. Um, I mean, there's, I think everyone, well, for the last, you know, several years, all the conspiracies, uh, theories that I think a lot of people have aren't conspiracy theories anymore. They're, yep. not, they're not theories anymore. They, they're proven, um, yeah, maybe 100% of them the last few years. And, you know, you can n- name your pick. Uh, I think the biggest one. Uh, is is that 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 shot thing that we were all supposed to get and told that was uh oh yeah 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 years ago and you know every every, some, every day something comes out about oh yeah that's they're taking it off the shelf and it really wasn't that good for you yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. that that's what I that's what I yeah. found out too I've been uh, working nonstop to try and turn that around for myself since I got duped into it. But, uh, I found out that like, it's a little bit more difficult than I want it to be. Yeah. I mean, I mean, some people, I mean, that was, you know, they, they, they had to, or what, you know, I, I chose, I'm like, no, I, I, I see what it is. Yeah. And it, it was what it is. Like it was exactly, but no one wanted to admit that and they still don't. And, uh, I'm still waiting for those apologies from all those people. Oh. online that wanted to uh, talk and say the thing and like, you know what? Fuck you guys, you motherfuckers. Like, pardon my French, but... No, no, no. go know, right you, ahead. You, 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 you know, um, so... But by all means, please take another one. Please yeah. do us the world, do the world a favor. Take five more. I mean, yeah. they already started to say that there was uh, four new uh, uh, variants and I found it to be funny because for months now, we haven't heard anything about anything. And Election then, season. Ah, yes, of course. It's another conspiracy theory, right? Well, I mean, that's the, one of the reasons they got Donald Trump on trial, right? right. Trying to block him from being able to be a, right. the president. And it's funny because at the same time, uh, Biden and Trump want to have a debate, which Biden says he's going to beat him, which I don't even know how you can do that when you can barely breathe and walk. Um, and then to top it off, RFK, uh, RFK is like, I'm the only one that's on the ballot, and he's not even getting a part in this debate. And they're not going to record it or do it. Uh, the, the, they're going to record it, but they're not doing it in front of a live audience right. because Trump feeds off of a live audience. Right. You know what I mean? So they're, like they're basically just rigging it to, to you know. I mean, is it is it ever been more clear that they're totally rigging this thing? They have for the last <laughs> whatever. It's it's a waste of time to even to like even convince. You know, well, like, there's no it's, convincing it's, though. Yeah, it's like, you it's, you it's, either see it or you don't. It, I don't know. And if you don't see it and you don't want to admit it, then you're a piece of shit. Like, yeah, that's. I mean, come on. Like, be reasonable. Be uh, uh have some freaking morals like it is what it is you it, it's it's you know it's it's, it's bullshit yeah but yeah it's whatever it. like hopefully things go uh the the correct way for a, a lot of a lot of people are struggling right now in, in america like i i see it with my business yeah I, I've, I've lost business because people can't afford certain things anymore yeah right? and, and that's when, happening everywhere you know when someone say, when people say oh it's it's not go buy eggs yeah Go go buy anything and say it was better than four years ago. No, impossible. Go buy fuel. Yeah, everything is more. So it, you know you can't. There's 
There's that. Right. <laughs> you know. No, and I, 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 I've been noticing this more and more as well. It's just like, you know, people who own a home can't leave their homes because if you want to go buy a new home, it costs you, just as much or more. It costs way more oh, yeah. because the interest rates, even though they didn't slash them like they said they were going to, they literally just left them flat. So they haven't increased it and they haven't decreased it, but they increased it so much that the interest rates are just absolutely uh, insane to even fathom that they're real. It's like, what do you, like the, the amount that you want uh, on a car or a house or to do anything, I know more 24-year-olds today that are staying home with their parents because they literally just can't move out. I've got a friend that has two roommates in a two-bedroom apartment because it's $2,640 a month. Yeah. It's what? A, it's insane for, for an apartment? It, anything, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, so people who can't do what we were all told we were going to be able to do, which is graduate, buy a house, provide for our family, and have a life. Right. And the without those first two pieces, you don't really have a life in America without owning a home and doing things and providing for yourself. And if there's no way to provide for yourself, then, then you don't feel like there's anything worth doing. Right. Right. Cause if you don't have anything worth doing, then what is life really worth? Yeah. Everything, everything's out of reach. The, the things that you want most and your job is not going to pay enough. And you know, you're, you're, you're struggling. Well, which a lot, jobs a lot can't are. even keep up with the inflation. Right. Right. So you get a job, you're getting paid, things are going well. And in two months, everything increases to the point where you're back to where you were struggling. But now you're in a new job. And now all of a sudden you're like, well, you need a second job. I need a second job or I need to get a raise. And they don't want to give you a raise because this is what we hired you at. And this is what you're valued at. And if you can show us you can do more then maybe we'll give you a raise. But that's not for another 12 months. You've only been here for two months. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, you have to wait. And while you're waiting, the prices e e keep increasing. You can't buy, you can't do as much. It's just this endless snowball of almost disappointment. Yeah. You know? And it, it, it's crazy to me because I didn't, I saw this coming, but I didn't see it coming in this way. Like, I knew that there was going to be a wave of people who were, you know, I said four or five years after the pandemic, and we're pretty close to that now. And now you're seeing it even more than I anticipated because I didn't realize how many people were affected by this and they didn't have a game plan to get ahead of it before it hit. Yeah. You know? I think they didn't assume... Uh, it was going to be as bad as it is. Yeah. Right? Because it's probably the worst maybe that it's ever been in a long time at least, right? So uh, I can see now why there is such a, a um, uh, I don't know if the word is like or, or dislike, let's say, for one side. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's such a uh, um, reverence for the the other side. Yeah. You know, which, you know, what, say what you want. Maybe he's not a good person. That's fine. Who cares about that, right? Like, uh, um, but... I remember four years ago, my paying two dollars and thirty cents for gas was was pretty cool, right? Uh, yeah. And, and everything else, like uh, we had security, border security, we had all these things that were better. And I think now people are like, "You're right. Like this is, this is. I can't afford groceries. I can't afford the nicer thing. I can't afford to go out to eat anymore. You know, things like that. You know. Even and it, but you you the. We can't do these things, right? We're having trouble with this. But then everybody who comes over the border gets housing, license, a T-shirt, and Cell somebody phone, to vote for. Debit card. And you're like, wait a minute. But we have people all over this country that are suffering. And you're going to allow more people to come in, and then you're just going to give them all this stuff. Well, why don't we just give this stuff to the people that are here that need it and take care of that issue first instead of taking care of everybody else like we always do. 
Well, it kind of shows you what party is concerned about America and what party is concerned about foreigners. Yeah. Right. So you know that's that that that's a big you know if you cared about your country and your your voting base, then I would think you would do more things to help them. Uh, you know, there's you don't see a lot of that, and it, it's kind of scary. Like it's, yeah. it seems like there's no conspiracy. Something is brewing. Uh, you know, you know, maybe you, th- you you think that or you can see that. I mean, I, you know, I never not assume that something's gonna, you know, the next six months or five months until whatever the, you know, it is the election, something's gonna pop off. I feel because it's it's too too mellow right now mm-hmm. for for the the what is at stake. Yeah. So it seems to be something. Whether it's going to be some, you know, random variation that just came out of the woodwork, uh, which I I know that there is something already kind of brewing with that. Yeah, you know, uh, you know. well, they call it flirt. Okay. There's there's four different. Are we talk we're we talking about COVID, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's or, four or new something else. Like, yeah, there's four new variants that are off of the Omicron variant, off of the Omicron COVID uh, uh, thing, and. What I what I've looked into and what I've talked about on the podcast is that they now have four different variants off of the Omicron, which is, one begins with an F, one begins with an L, one begins with an R, one begins with a T. So they stuck an I in the middle of it, and they call it flirt. And I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And it's just of course they have more fear porn to keep more people in their masks and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, I don't even understand why we keep pushing it this way. And I don't know if you've heard about this, but the who wants to have um, full control over all of our medical. So they want, they want it so that if, you know, there is another, uh, you know, virus that gets loose or whatever, you want to have it because that's what it did. It got loose, came from a lab. It was man-made. There's no hiding this shit anymore. And they don't demonetize you for saying this anymore because it's true. It was, it wasn't, didn't escape. It leaked. You think it leaked? I, 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 I so, think, I mean, look, look what, how they took advantage. Yeah, nope. Again, I don't know. Right. This is just, but I, there's uh, a lot of evidence right. proving what you're saying could be true. Maybe it did leak, and they just, they're like, oh, well, we can take advantage of this. I mean, look at the power trips that the, some of these countries and people, get, like, they, you're, they're they locking people away, like, in camps. Like, yeah. there they were, Australia. You know, so imagine, you know, why do they want such control? Well, they want to triple down on it for some reason, and they want to have even more control and they want to be able to do what they already did all over again without any questions. And then well, that, was, the, that was the test run. Right. right. They, and then at the same time, they want to tell you what you can and do can and can and cannot do with medications to yourself. Yeah. They want to be able to say, OK, well, if this is going on, when somebody walks into your office, Mr. Doctor, this is the only thing you're allowed to do for them. And if you do anything outside of this, you're fired. They kind of did that with the ivermectin thing, right? Yes. You know, and maybe some of that stuff helped. Uh, you know, now did you? See, I think I saw heard some recently where the, now they said, oh, it does kind of may help with that. When when uh, remember like Rogan was taking that yep. stuff and what they did to him and all that, and they you well, know, they literally changed his video too. They changed his the, video the to make him look sick, right? which was absolutely asinine because yeah. I saw the original video and then I saw the one that they posted on fucking news. Yeah. And I was like, why is the color so weird? Right. You know what I mean? It just, I mean, again, it just goes to show how evil, which is like, they were hiding that you, they, they, you weren't allowed to get that medicine. You weren't allowed to, doctors weren't allowed, like people died. Probably a lot of people died because they weren't, didn't have access to that, which could have helped them. Which was a medication that has been used for hundreds of years. Millions upon millions, and there was nothing wrong with nothing it. Nothing wrong with it. Until it did anything to, you know, offset. No, only this only this shot is what will work. Nothing right. else will. Right. Okay, well, again, there's another reason. If you're, if you're saying that, I mean, what are you hiding? Like, mm-hmm. you know. And the part that really started to get me after I got the shot um, was I found out that it was supposed to be put into a muscle 
And whenever they put anything into a muscle, they're supposed to pull back. When they put the needle in, they're supposed to pull back. And if they see blood, I don't remember what the term is that that's called. But when they see blood, they're supposed to take the needle out and move it because they're not in a muscle. They're in like a vein. So you're supposed to be doing this to make sure that you actually got it into the muscle. And a lot of the complications came from because it was being injected into in, into our veins and not into the muscle tissue, which I know now it would never have stayed isolated in, let's just say, the bicep muscle for fun. It would have never stayed there. It was it was designed to go further. It was it was it was it was faulty in the sense that you thought it would stay in one particular area. Mm. And when they were injecting people, they weren't I think it's called aspiration, maybe. And I, I they weren't doing that. So some people got it injected into their actual bloodstream, mm. which is where you saw a ton of complications. And you're like, "Okay, so they didn't they were supposed to do it a specific way. They didn't. People got injured, but we've given them an okay to do this because it's experimental, so they can't be in trouble for it. And then we have all these people pass. I didn't give them the okay. Nope, you didn't. And you were smart about it. I, I still sit here and kick myself for not being that way about it, but... Yeah, but I mean, if you, my, most people took the first one because... Maybe they had health, which is fine. Like if you, some people needed it. Sure. I do believe some yeah. people did did need it. Yes. Yeah. But if you look at the you know the the, the stats, I mean, children didn't need it. That was that right. Was, that was you know again another thing that you're like eh. pregnant women, pregnant women, uh, you know, healthy people. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. If you're older, yeah, get it by all means. Sure. I I would have too if I was you know really old. Um, more than likely. Yeah, and I think that but, this was all very well planned by them because the way that those vaccines came out, the way that they talked about mRNA, which is now a household thing, everybody knows somewhat of what it means or what it is or they've heard of it now. And that was one of their goals so that they could continue making any type of vaccine with the mRNA uh, uh, bonding agent or whatever you want to call it. And then you you release this on purpose, let's say, and then you're like, well, it's okay because we have this to counteract it. Right. So let's just, let's play an experiment, mm -hmm. you know? So you can go down so many different roads, and I'm not saying whether we're, whether we're true or we're false. We may make some sense. We may not. But at the end of the day, this was done. They're tripling down on it. Right. They want more control over us. Uh, for some reason, the Democratic Party has gone so far left that they just, they don't even see it our way anymore. They're not doing anything for us. They're doing everything for themselves. And yeah. if we don't get in there and correct this somehow, whether it's by voting or, 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 talking, sending letters to our elected officials that are making these decisions for us. You know, if we don't speak up and say that this is wrong and you're not, uh, uh, you're not on my side anymore. And then sometimes I feel like almost both parties are not on our side and all they care about is themselves at the end of the day. But it's weird to say that, and I've always voted Republican more than I have Democratic. I'll put that out there. I don't care. Um, I voted for Trump. I voted for Biden. I'm a fucking idiot. I don't know. You know, I got the double shot. Whatever. I make all kinds of bad decisions in my life. But at the end of the day, I see what's happening, and it still leads me back to the same exact thing, that they want to have complete and absolute control over us so that, well, because they're like, oh, well, well, we'll give you what you need. And then you just do what we say and you'll be fine because you, you don't have to have anything and you'll be happy. Well, yeah, you, you see that with, with a lot of other countries and what they're, you know, what, what we'll, we'll take care of you. But we, you got to give us something back. You know, we, we get to get, we get to this. We get your guns. We get the control of your bank accounts and, and, and you know, a lot of China, even like Canada, I think is, is, has a lot of, you, know, you saw what they did up there. Yeah. Like yeah. Canada is awful right now. There are people 
leaving Canada and going to um shit, where are they going? Uh they going to uh shit, Germany? Were they going to Ger- where where were they going? They were they were leaving Canada. Actually, I saw something that where Trudeau was actually paying people like ten thousand dollars to leave. Oh, to leave? To leave. Yeah. If you want to leave, here here you go. You can leave. Yeah. And I I don't know what is going on in Canada, but there is not many people that live there that are very happy right now. No. And it's it's really really taken a a, a turn for the worse there. Yeah. And I, it, I have a lot of friends up there, and and you know just you know just seeing what what they was done to them in terms of like their rights, like we. We're lucky here. I mean, yeah. even though you know, they did, they tried to do a lot of stuff with us here. Yeah, they tried. Yeah, but yeah, we we just we're we're stubborn. Yeah, I mean, most people I think you know they're awake now. They're like, oh. I'm I'm hoping that they are. You know, you know? Yeah, yeah, hopefully because part two, if there's a round two of, of whatever happened, like it's like I said, they had a test run and they saw what worked and what didn't work and. But well, well, let's yeah. be honest about what worked and what didn't work. As far as I'm concerned, nothing worked. It worked in their favor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. I let's mean, make that but, clear. But, because but, I mean, look at you had no choice. You were, you know, you were, you were um, silenced. A lot of people were silenced. They were banned. They were uh, fired. Like there, yeah. there wasn't a choice. They, you know, when they say, oh, you have a choice. No, there, there isn't. It was either, you know, you do this or, or this happens. And, yeah. You know, I think I think the last 70 80 years we've seen other countries that kind of had very similar uh and it doesn't go well. Yeah. It doesn't go well for the people. No. It goes well for the government. Oh, it goes yeah. well for all them. Mm-hmm. But as for us, it's it doesn't it doesn't work out well for us at all. What yeah. what they're offering is not what we want. It's yeah. definitely you might think that it's what you want. It's it might sound great to you, and I really do believe that if, the, if you trust, yes, who's doing it, right? But yeah. but the younger generation doesn't understand this. Right, I feel like they hear these things, they they go, oh, that's a great idea, and then they feed more into it without understanding, you know, the bigger picture of how we got to where we are today of what we stand for and we don't stand for this we don't want people telling us what to do we're here well because our parents or siblings or or ancestors came over and put us here but we're here and supposedly we're the best country in the world even though we're the youngest country in the world trying something that i believe really hasn't been tried before and now they're going back back to a a type of government that is not what America was built on. No. You know? And it like, I think it kind of ruins the uh, overall American, um, I guess you could call it a dream or something. I don't know, but it's, it's weird how so many more people accept what they're saying and I thought it would be the opposite. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, again, you could just look. They lie straight to your face, and then they smile, and you're like, oh, okay, I would try. like, no. Why, why would you? There's so much evidence of, of just bullshit. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, not everyone. I guess maybe some people are just, they're, they're they don't want to think about it. They just want to, like, go along with the flow and, and, and just hope everything goes well yeah right, right but you, you see you can't i think you know you can't you can't think that way especially nowadays you you have to be you should be uh aware there's you know you know we we, we were lucky in some ways i was you know i my, my business didn't get shut down right a lot of people that i know in the same industry they lost their their dreams their They're, business like their their you know livelihood their their lives some people like couldn't take it like i mean over what yeah over what? A lie. Like, again, like, that's, to me, is, is unforgivable. Like, right. I, I I will hold that till the day I die. Like, uh, it's, you know, it's it, it's 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 messed up. Yeah, and I, I agree with you 100%, you know. And we, we could talk about this all day, but have you, have you heard of the, um, have you heard of the lasers that uh, they put on the front of planes? 
that can burn down a house without a, as long as you, if you have a blue roof, you're safe. Have you heard about the blue roofs? I Yeah, I heard something about the Hawaii thing, which is another whole weird, uh, well, dis- unfortunate disaster. Uh, but yeah, I did, I don't know how true that is. You know, I, I mean, I've been, I I, I've just been hearing about it more and more. And, and the thing that really got me was uh, Biden talking to somebody and he was he was whispering to the guy. Oh, I, and saw, I saw that. You yeah. did see that one? All right. So he's whispering to the guy about the blue roofs. And then he's in the middle of this, you know, this uh, this, this speech. And then he, he talks, he says it again, where he's like, you know, everybody's got to make sure they have the right roof. And we're all like, what are you talking about? And then you look through videos of China and some other countries, and they are literally taking this blue plastic and putting it all over their roofs. And you can actually see on Google Maps, like the increased amount of blue roofs being uh, installed or rolled over or painted uh, to hopefully deflect these lasers that could take you out. And yes, Hawaii was one of them that supposedly this happened there because whenever you see this destruction, you see the destruction of the houses, you see some trees burn down, mm-hmm. but then you start really looking around and you're like, well, what, why didn't that get destroyed? Or you zoom out and all of a sudden you'll see two houses burned down and one in between, but it had a blue roof and it's still standing you know, so there was multiple things that were said about Hawaii. I know that there was something with uh, 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 electrical wire, like, snapped and fell down. And then there was wind, and it supposedly caught fire, and the wind took over, and it wiped that whole area out. But if it was these maybe lasers that our government has that supposedly could, you know, potentially burn down areas so that people like Bill Gates or Oprah could walk in and then buy up all the land. And now they've, because Bill Gates at the end of the day is definitely trying to own all the farmland. He owns more farmland than I think anybody on the planet. Right. Which is a proven fact. I think. Right. Yeah. It's a proven fact. And I've talked about him a few times on this podcast. I've had to cut a few things out because YouTube didn't like it. But that man is probably the evilest person on the planet, I think, because he definitely wants to control everything. You know, he wants to control what we eat. He wants to control the the vaccines that we take. And the day that he got a pie in the face was probably the day that he decided that humanity needs to go. Because what do you mean you don't like to eat crickets? I mean, I've eaten crickets, chocolate covered crickets. Yeah, those are good. Yeah. Yeah, those aren't bad. I mean, but he wants, they really want to push this manufactured meat. And I don't know about this manufactured meat. They're saying that they're taking DNA from a cow, somehow making this meat. And I thought it was weird that they could take a steak, have this computer take a picture of that steak. Then they sent the steak through a meat grinder, put it into a 3D printer, and it printed the steak as if it was never cut up. Or yeah. grinded. I, I would, huh? I would uh, associate that with the uh, other things that they said that we should get. Yeah, right? As, I, as good for you. Yeah. I feel like everything that they tell us that's good for us or... Do the opposite. Yes. Yes. I, I, I almost guarantee doing the opposite right. now because, you know, me being a person that got my first two shots, I now see much more clearly than I used to. Yeah. And I just, I'm like, oh, no, no. I'm going to do the complete opposite of everything that you say. Every time you tell me this is bad for me and this is no good, I'm going to look more into that because it may not be as bad as you th- say it is. But every time I look into the stuff that you say is good for me, I'm like, I'm not putting that in my body. No. No, it's no. crazy. Yeah, you're smart. You can't, like, I, I don't even think twice about that. Like, Yeah. You should eat it. No, sorry. Yeah. Uh but yeah, Oprah's been buying up a ton of land too. She, it's crazy how how yeah, many of these people are so billionaires. Rich that they can right. I mean, who knows what the real reason is? But again, you have all that. You're so rich that you can. I mean, why not? But Elon Musk is very rich. I don't think he's buying up all the land. No, but he's he's doing a lot of good stuff. With he it. he is he's doing a lot of good stuff with it. But it also has me questioning. 
a lot of the stuff that he's doing as well because I've been talking to a bunch of people and like I said, this is kind of fun for me and this is what I've been digging into lately, but are we actually getting into outer space? You know, what do, what do you think? What do you, what, are you on, uh, do you, do you think we're flat or do you think we're round? Mm, good question. Right? No, I mean, uh, I've, I've, I've watched some podcasts, uh, a lot recently on things like that. And people have some really outrageous and outlandish, uh, conspiracy theories about, you know, you know, all this. And I'm just, it's, it's, it's interesting. Like it's, I don't believe one way or the other, but it's just interesting. Oh, that's an interesting take. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, the world, the world's round, right? They're thrown, okay. All term, right. In terms of like, uh, you know, the moon landing, was it real? Or no. was it this? And you know, and like it, yeah, there's, I mean, it's just, it's interesting to look when you can see things and things don't add up. It's just like anything else. Like, if you really look at it, like, I don't know, like, and, and then not only that, but, you know, at during that time, what was at stake? Mm -hmm. Public perception. Uh, again, you can see what they would do to, you know, you're like, yeah, nothing is off the books. And, and, right. And I wouldn't. I say I wouldn't be surprised because it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. You know, I'm not that I believe it. Like, I'm like, I'm just, uh, I'm, 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 I'm not, uh, I'm not surprised by anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Me neither. I've just, I've been so curious about it because I've heard so many different things about if you, if like, okay, this is just, it's craziness. So just, just go with me here. But I've been told that, if you, and I might be butchering this, so I apologize if I am, but if you believe in a round earth, then you have been duped into listening to Satan. So, and I, and, and, and it, if you believe in the flat earth and, and then you believe more in, in, in God, like God if it, it, it has so much more into it. And I know that I'm butchering the shit out of this right now because my brain's not working, but there was something about how, uh, God is also involved in this because the thing that started this all off is I, I don't believe I, I have a real hard time with religion. It's very structured. It's, it's, it's very dark. Um, I don't like the way that any religion, restricts you or like the, the the catholic religion to me is like one of the worst because everything is guilt ridden anything that you think of that is outside of what god says that you can do it's just it's 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 it, it makes you feel guilty and i think that's just the way the catholic church is is everything is based off of guilt and if you feel guilty then you can ask for forgiveness and you'll be fine i just but we've built so many wars and so many things have come off of religion that like, it's like, well, if religion is supposed to be positive, death, a and, there's happened. a lot of death in it. In it's, many religions. It, it's very yeah. dark. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, okay, well, I don't like that. Like, why can't it just be, you know, pretty? Why do we have to believe and then make other people believe? And if they don't, then they get slaughtered. Like those type of things for me is very hard to swallow. And it makes it more difficult for me to believe. But I also kind of want the end of my story to just be the end of my story. I don't know if I want to be a spirit floating around. I don't want to be reincarnated as some type of animal. I would just like to be able to get through this and then kind of have it be over. You know, I think to me, that would be the most relaxing thing in the world. I would finally get some rest. You know what I mean? But. So, so according to all of those little things, like flat earth is, is, is like, we can't leave this thing, right? We have the, the firmament. It's, um, it's based off of a, a book that we've talked about a few times on here. It's, uh, almost like before the Bible. And I, I just, the name escapes me right now. But so supposedly the earth is flat. If you believe in God, you would believe in that we're stuck in a firmament um, you know, and, and, and this is what he's designed for us in a sense. But if you believe that the world is round 
and you also believe in God, you're not believing in the right God. That's actually the devil that has disguised everything for you, which is so or, wild to or, me. Or it's in reverse, but they're just making you think it's the other way. Maybe. Mm. But, like, I also am under the uh, – I, I have a curiosity. I'm not under. I have a curiosity of – what does it matter at the end of the day? You know, um, I bring this up over and over again because Magella is going to come back on here. We are going to end up debating some flat earth. I keep talking about it, but hey, things hey, keep getting in our way. But have you seen uh, that guy? He talks a lot about the other planets. Uh, he, he's a uh, um, I forgot his name. He's a black guy, but he's he's uh, he talks about like Mars and the we're the, not talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson. No. OK. Um, uh, another guy. Um, uh, I can't think of his name, but he's been on a lot of podcasts recently talking about um, Mars and aliens and, and early religion and the, the gods that, you know, started us all and all that, like the Enaki and things like that. Yep. Um, it, it, I've seen like some of it. It's very outlandish stuff, but, you know, like I said, I don't buy into it. It's just interesting to me. Like I like to hear different sides and takes on it because it's like oh okay that okay maybe that some things make sense some things don't and you know it, one one way or the other i'm just you know I, i'm just doing i i don't i can't i don't think too far out there because yeah we're we're so small and where we are and what we can do in terms of you know the vastness if there is you know, is it a simulation? Who know, like you know, all that. Like right, it's, right, like, right. It's just I'm doing. We're, you know, we're we're thinking about that when we got to worry about like, are we gonna be able to afford groceries and stuff? Yes, right now? yes, like, I know. So much like, uh, it's interesting to think about all those different things. It, it's you know, because if you're if you're curious about those things, it, it's it's it, it's definitely trying to tie things together and like oh, like the pyramids and all these different things that you know. Uh, you know, if if you're like that kind of that mind of of, of curiosity and in 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 interest, but uh, does it really matter? I mean, yeah. At it, the end of the day, yeah. I don't think it actually matters. But I'm just so curious as to why there's such a strong debate about it, yeah. and what the end result would be if one way was proven more than the other, and Right now, the problem that I have with it in general is the simple fact that you, we have the entire planet lying to us. Mm -hmm. Every single government, every single country, every single leader has... They're all, they're all kind of the same track lately in terms of like, you see what's going on in the Holland and things like that yeah. in France with the farmers and it's all, again, very coordinated and it all seems to be like of the very same type of uh, uh, things happening, which is, that's interesting. And it depends on how you right. look at it. Like, but it's one hell of a lie. Yeah. Like why, why and, is that? And it's know? not like every country gets along. Most yeah. of us, they, they, we all want to fight each other, right? Cause right. everybody wants one thing. All of our leaders want one thing, world domination. I haven't yeah. figured out why they want to control the entire world. I don't know what that, 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 what they're looking for when they're, you know what I mean? Like what, what, what do you, what is it that about this that you want so badly? It makes no sense to me. Can't you just worry about what's going on here instead of worrying about controlling everything? But how is it that they all feel the same way, but yet they're all going to lie about this one thing that we're all, every country's involved in, you know, supposedly if there's a firmament, no rockets can leave our atmosphere, right? So you can't actually get out to space. So the Tesla uh, car is not actually floating around there. Now the moon, you know, the moon landing, I, I honestly a thousand percent believe that did not happen. It was all Hollywood. It was definitely for the Cold War. It was definitely to make it out of Russia. But it doesn't say that we, you know, uh, uh, can't, leave our atmosphere and get out there. I just don't think we went to the moon when we said we did. D didn't they say, I, I, heard, I heard or read about this. I think I saw like a podcast, uh, I, well, a lot of YouTube podcasts and you go oh, down yeah. like a wormhole, right? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, that we don't have the technology now to go back to the moon. Right. Is that tr like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. They're still to trying me. to figure it out yeah, because that's... we never went. Right. That, and that's... that's fine. There's a movie coming out, right? So every time that they release, some type of a movie, 
it it's just before they tell us that it either did or didn't happen. It's just right. like we're, during all of the COVID bullshit, they were like, aliens are real. Right. And you're like, well, what? And everybody kind of passed over it because, well, we don't give a shit right now. We got way more important things, but you're doing this because it's a distraction. Right. Well, they're releasing a movie on the faking of the moon landing. Mm. It's going to be coming out in a couple months. I think it comes out this summer. Yeah. So are they doing that because they're getting ready to tell us that we didn't make it to the moon? Like, like we already figured out. It's like OJ, like writing a book, like if I did it or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, oh, okay. So like, do and and then you start looking into Mars, and Mars is, if you look at the pictures of Mars, right, the red planet. And you take a look at the rover and where it's gone and all the mountain ranges that it's looking at on that planet. They match up with some place. Like it's in, in Canada. Yeah, I saw that. It's that, in Canada. That one guy talks about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I know you know who I'm talking about. I just can't remember that. the name. And once I see yeah. a face, I'll remember. Yeah. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, okay, so are, are we also not on Mars? Like, are you guys capable of... Maybe leaving the atmosphere, but not getting anywhere. Because everything is just unreachable from right. where we're at. And if it is, it's fine. It's right. fine. But why are you going to do all of this well, to supposedly tell us that you're on Mars? But, like, I feel like the moon is almost in between Mars. So why is it we can get to Mars, but we can't get to our moon? Right. You know what I mean? So, like... and. Why would everybody lie about the earth being round or flat? Because at the end of the day, I don't know if it actually matters. But like, man, this this thing just keeps getting deeper and deeper. And I'm like, and you start looking at those pictures of, 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 of Canada and you match them up with the locations on Mars. And Jesus Christ. They changed the color tone, but you put them over. Right, I saw, I saw something. Like you that. overlap yeah. those, it, it and was, they're identical. The exact same rocks, landscape. Like, like maybe, but it's also you can fake that. As you can fake, fake that fake too. Well, right? well I mean, yeah. can't you can fake anything today now? Well, yeah, I mean, all you do look at the Joe Rogan. They just change the uh, the color tone. There was there know. was something with Rogan supposedly. Uh, commentating on the Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight on Netflix. And Brian Callen saw it on Instagram or something. So he called Joe Rogan. It was a deep fake? It was a deep fake. It wasn't him. It was not happening. So it just goes to show you that, like, if you say enough on the internet and all somebody has to do is grab the video, grab your picture, grab your voice, and then type into the computer, make him say this, and it can, you, you, I have programs right now where if I'm looking at the camera, but then I stray away and then look back at the camera, I can click a button that says never lose eye contact. Mm. And then that point where I turned away would never happen. Yeah. So, if we're capable of doing small little tweaks like that, like we're capable of doing so much more. And now with AI and stuff like that, now if you do something with AI, it's recommended that in the corner you make a notation that you did this with AI. Right. You know, or there's going to be some type of, like all my YouTube videos that I put up now. So you have to prove that it's did, authentic. Yeah. Did, yeah. You, did you have somebody do something in the video that they didn't do? Type of situation. That reminds now. me of uh, uh, you see that the Joe Biden, <coughs> that Joe Biden video. Which one? Where he doesn't blink. He's like giving some yes. speech, and you're like, that's it. Just seems very weird. It's like, really weird like, to not see him blink. Yeah, right, is that? And that seems like it could be AI, right? I mean, like, what would be so difficult about can, putting him into AI, right? Well, they kind of have to. The guy can't speak anything. I mean, right? yeah. So, so they'll do whatever it takes to make it seem like he's still breathing. Right. It was very, very strange. But yeah. I was like, eh, okay. I mean, we've all seen him just read off the prompter. Right. Or you fall know? off a stage and I, upstairs. The yeah. guy reads, you know, pause for laughter. What? You're not supposed to read that, dude. You know how to read a prompter. What are you doing? Have you heard the conspiracy where uh, Joe Biden is actually not him? It's a... It, the mask. It, no, it's a, it's a double. It's he, a double. He, he looks okay. different than... And he kind of does. Well, there's, maybe it's a plastic surgery or something like that, but he looks a little different than he did 
you know, four years there, ago. There's, there's a picture of all four by uh, Biden over generations, yeah. and he looks totally different. Yeah. He looks totally different, but they also did that with uh, Dave Chappelle. They, they don't think Dave Chappelle is Dave Chappelle. I heard that. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's a lot of them out there. You know, there's a lot of those things. It's like uh, like fucking Obama and Michael, yeah. right? No. Yeah. You know, well, she's the biggest woman I've ever seen in my life. So, I mean, <laughs> shoulders always out, bro. And he always said a few times he refers to her as Mike. Yeah. In speeches. You're like, and you're like, what? And then yeah. you you start looking into like the kids may not actually be theirs they might be adopted yeah. and you're Did like you ever, yeah they, where was the the baby pictures where was the yeah baby? yeah it yeah, gets some rabbit it, holes so you and and I've seen so many of those things where like they'll show the neck and it's like a slit right here almost like they're wearing a mask and you're like I I don't know I, but it's. It's kind of it, it's kind of fun to kind of go. Fun. Yeah, it's like yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna like divulge my life to it and 100 percent believe it. But at the yeah. end of the day, if they are doing this, my question is why? They're aliens. Like, yeah. they're aliens. <laughs> that's yeah. why they told us they're real. Yeah, that's how. They're like wearing they, body suits, right? Like, yeah. What was that movie? Uh, uh, that with the aliens. With the uh, oh um. Uh, not the the body snatchers? No, no, no. It was the comedy with uh, oh. Will Smith. Uh, oh. Men in Black. Men in Black. Oh, yeah. Jesus. I yeah. And the, 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 he's got like a body suit and he's walking all kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was actually like a giant cockroach or yeah, something yeah, that yeah, took yeah. over a human. Yeah. And he didn't know how to manipulate the body properly. Yeah, it's kind of like that. But man, it's just, it, 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 it's, there's so many things going on today and our technology is skyrocketing people are super worried about the humanoids taking over and and ai is gonna you know get together and it's gonna you know make this crazy humanoid that's smarter and better than us and i was listening to a guy uh last night who designs a lot of the ai and stuff and he was talking about how um he programs the AI and he's like, the AI is nowhere near being able to take over. Why? And, and he, his main thing was he's not understanding why people want the AI to be human. Like he's like, there are 6 billion humans. Why would we design our AI to be like a human? Right. It doesn't make any sense. Right. We're not designing it to be like a human. We want it to be better than human. We got 6 billion humans yeah. and we can't get it right. So we need to design something that's better than. And that in itself was a little scary. There, there was a movie about that in the 80s. Yeah, what was the name of that movie? Terminator. Yep. Skynet. Yep. Remember they're all saying that at the beginning? Yeah, yeah. Then it turned. Then it turned because it realized it was better right. than us. <laughs> we don't need you humans. No. Yeah. We can, uh, we can do this on our own. And I've always said the first... First company that that pulls this off is our Skynet. Yeah, it's it's either going to be Google or Netflix. Did you see that Netflix is opening up theaters? No. Yeah, they're going to be opening up their own theaters. Don't they have enough theaters now? I don't think Netflix has a theater. No, period. I've seen like AMC, like regular theaters, like right. But they're dying. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I was hearing something about. Because Netflix is doing all this live stuff now. Uh, the Tom Brady roast was done live. There was uh, another event that was done live. Well, they they got to change their, their format, right? Because, again, they're going to die if they, you know, you know everything's got to evolve a little bit, right? Yeah, so. but I just thought it was funny that the main cause of theaters dying... Netflix. Is Netflix, yeah. and now they're thinking about opening up theaters. Smart. You're like... Wow, wow, is that not a brilliant idea? Bring it full circle. We tore them down so that we could rebuild it ourselves. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, man. I remember when Netflix was just a fucking DVD in the mail. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you Back could, in you the day. You share your password, and now you can't. <laughs> yeah, I guess they got rid of that. I think yeah. you're only allowed two, is it two, two passwords two now? Or two or three? Like yeah. Yeah. So they, they really limited that, but... I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a wild world that we're getting into now. And 
China has got those robot dogs. They put mm. machine guns on them. Have you seen the ones with the flamethrowers? Yep. Oh, you can, I, 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 I talked about it. You can buy it for $16,000. Those are cool. Those are really cool. And there's a humanoid that you can buy for $10,000 now. That's a flamethrower? Not a flamethrower, no, but yet. it is It is a little robot that Does you can... Does it have can, an attachment, at least? No, no, no attachment. It's just these dogs. And I knew they were going to put weapons on those dogs. Well, I mean... As it, they should. It was inevitable. Yeah. California did it. China's doing it. They're all going to put guns and and some type of lethal enforcement on these robots eventually. Yeah. It's going to happen. I mean, if they can send that out into a battlefield instead of a human who could make an error or, you know what I mean? It, it, they just put the dogs out there and, and they just let they, somebody sits there behind a remote, just like we do with drones. They have tanks and Humvees that are all automated. There's no fucking humans in them now. And there was a, uh, the U S actually did this. They came out with uh, sorry if I'm moving too fast, but they came out with uh, something that the, the, like manta ray. So it's this, giant underwater uh ship that's shaped like a manta ray mm. and it runs off of uh no gas no electricity it's all self uh self-propelling and regenerate as it goes it regenerates energy so it can go underwater go over the whole, well, I don't know about the whole ocean, but it can go a very large distance looking for Chinese subs and stuff like that and see if we can find anybody hiding. And it can go for long, long periods of time. Hmm. And I saw that the other day and I'm like, well, that's what we need in our vehicles. If you guys want us to have a greener vehicle, we're never going to be able to do it with these EVs. Right. Our, 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 our infrastructure will not support the amount of energy that we're going to need to have all the Americans, all the people on the face of the planet, plug in their car. Not going to happen. Oh, there's more conspiracy theories with that. Whole yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. Right? Like the, the people who have come up with things that run off of like a gallon of water, let's say, uh, or something like that, uh, but they mysteriously... Did they vanish. They vanish. Right? They vanish. And yeah. the one piece that you needed to finish that was in their brain. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah. It was, you know, what, I mean, again, you kind of goes back to like the, the Tesla, like Nikola Tesla and, right. and all those things. And, and uh, who was who was the guy who uh, kind of screwed him over? Uh, oh, the, shit. I can't the, remember his the, name. The oil tycoon. Was it? Oil yeah. Tycoon? I think it was an oil tycoon. I can't remember his name. Yeah. But there's, yeah, there's all those things. And like there was that uh availability he came up with you know free electricity or whatever like how to do that but again it's people who wanted to make money yeah so like uh now we can't you know it all ties together like, it all ties hey, together we, we got we had a cure for that but no 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 that's illegal we can't right i i think all of this ties together at the end of the day it sounds like we're all over the place and i definitely know i feel like i'm all over the place most of the but time it all kind of ties in the but same it thing. all kind of comes back together yeah it all does in the end. Each one of these things, just at the end of the day, the bigger picture is it's just more ways to try and control. Yeah. You know, like the Power. Smithsonian. The Smithsonian says that we only date back so many thousands of years, right? Supposedly, in the Grand Canyon, there's artifacts that have been located and found in these tunnels. Now, I don't, do you know much about the Grand Canyon? I only know very little and only what I absorbed. So there's supposedly 333 tunnels that they have found out of, I think, 2,000 in the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. Only three of those allow tourists. Two of them are shut down because they are dangerous to tourists. So that takes away five. So you got... Uh, like 328 or something. Or no, it's eight. There's three for people can go into, five that nobody can go into that they found, but they're dangerous. So that brings you to 325 tunnels that have been found and are not allowed to be seen by anybody. Hmm. Now, according to what they said was, is that these artifacts are to be safe. We want to keep them safe. We don't want them to get vandalized. That's, uh, <clears throat> that's why we're keeping people out. I'll take a picture of them. I'm like, okay, so you won't allow anybody to see them, but you also <laughs> won't pull them out 
to be examined, to to be brought somewhere where they could be safe. Yeah. And then people could go through those tunnels without the artifacts. We move artifacts all the time. We move things all the time. We don't leave anything where we find it. We we well, find well, it, well, and if we can move it, no, we will. Why no pictures? Right. I mean, what, there was a there was a couple pictures, but like the pictures, they look like just regular artifacts, right? Yeah. They like in the picture. Like I don't know what you would have to be looking at on that artifact to determine how old it is, right? I don't I don't know these things, but supposedly these artifacts are older than what the Smithsonian says. Mm -hmm. So supposedly this brings us back 20,000 some odd years. Yeah. So even further back than the Smithsonian has written. So therefore it would break history. It yeah. would break all of our schooling and everything that we know and how we got here because supposedly there was somebody here before the Native Americans. Or you could go off of uh, Graham Ham. Graham Ham. Ham dude, Hancock. yes. That's some interesting stuff. Uh, right, uh, with the giants and everything else. Or that, just the, you know, just kind of like his, his whole thought on that, the the young, young Adrias, young Adrias, yep. all that, like, uh, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's interesting stuff. It, it's pretty cool. Like, I saw some of his, do you see some of his Netflix? Uh, oh, I watched it all. I only saw, like, a, like the first four episodes. I should. Yeah, it was so good. It, yeah. was, it was so good, and at that time, we were talking a lot about the Giants on here and how the major floods and stuff like that washed them out, and then some of them survived, and some people still see them, yeah. you know, and... Um, Maybe that's Bigfoot. Uh, maybe that is Bigfoot. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll ever know that either. You know, there's so many different ones that you could uh, uh, look into. And, and But Graham Hancock had some really good evidence of why these things were here, why they kept moving these posts, you know, chasing this star. Mm. And, and, and everything was very accurate with the sky. And, you know, you know why were they so... You know what? What was it about that 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 how, that they, how did they wanted? Figure that out? How did they figure it yeah, out? Right. You know, and I think all of these things are just very interesting, and I do believe that some of them are, you know, made up. I I think a lot of this stuff is made up for the simple fact to have an argument with the other side, right? You always want to distraction. Yeah, yeah, you got this distraction going on, and I think. A lot of these things uh, are distractions from the bigger picture. And at the end of the day, um, I think a lot of us now see what the bigger picture is. And, yeah. and, and one day, I, I hope that, you know, uh, more people see what this picture is. And, and the, you come to your senses and realize that it's not about helping us. It's not about uh, making sure that we're safe. It's, it's about controlling us. And getting us to do exactly what they want. And once they figure out the key to do that, don't think that they will think even for a moment to not turn that key. Well, yeah. I mean, just look at history. I mean, right. every, uh, I mean, a lot of civilizations, I think they're kind of all, when they say history repeats itself, it kind of, you kind of can see it, it does. Yeah. Right. I mean, look at a lot of the other countries, the Middle East and, you know, the, anywhere like the the when someone had power england right uh, like the people lived horribly right right like uh, maybe that's just human nature it seems to be like people gravitate some people gravitate when they have that little bit of power yeah and would they say absolute power corrupts absolute is that is that the saying so i think i think that's the saying yeah i so. think it is absolute power corrupts absolutely or absolute yeah yeah absolute yeah i think so but i mean again it's you know, you see it. You you see people who have power. Some people that you know are good with it. Right. Most people, I think, a lot of people who didn't, or when they get power, they abuse it, right? Because it feels good. Like they're essentially uh, become a bully. Yeah, most people do become bullies. Yeah. It's weird. It's even scary. even at work. Yeah. Even at work, people do that. Yeah, any, you, any level. You get, yeah. Like a little bit of power. Like you get a little bit of power, and you see some people get really weird with it. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, well, I, I can make your schedule, and I can fire you, and then all of a sudden, you're supposed to be this important person, and you're like, no, you're a person. Right. Just, just treat people the way you want to yeah. be treated, and I feel like 
you get so much further. That's why I feel like in my position and what I do, you know, I'm more of, I listen a lot. I do a lot of listening, you know, we're running 11 stores. And the one thing that I realize is people just need to talk. Yeah. They need to vent. They need to get things out. And if you're there and you show support and you don't always implement your power, like, when you have to implement your power, it's so much easier mm. because you listened, right. you, you, you were there, but now I need, I, I kind of need you to do this, right? right. I, I, unfortunately, this is what I got. I, I need you to do this now. And yeah. you know what they do? Oh, okay. Yeah. They're not going to question that because you listened. Right. You, 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 you gave them something back and you're, right. not, you're not fighting them. And you know, I, I, yeah, yeah I, that, that's important. I mean, obviously communication is key. Yeah. You know, I sometimes I struggle with that, you know, yeah. but you know, I think I'm getting better. But yeah, especially as you know, listening to someone's issues and as, and, a, as opposed to you know fighting them or, right. or taking it the wrong way and taking it, yeah, so. just be, just be, you know, at, at the end of the day, all the people, uh, everybody, everybody needs to be heard. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to be heard, or they want to get something out. And sometimes you don't even have to say anything back. They just need to get it off their chest because they can't get it out of their brain. Mm -hmm. And just being able to put it out there, it is helping them. Right. And I feel like that has been completely lost within our government because they're not listening to us anymore. And and, and the, the more we stay quiet, the more we give in, the more we lose and the less we have. Yep. And we're not going to be happy. It's not going to, that's not the way it works. Yeah. Uh, our, 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 when we're listened to and the things that we feel is important to us are being taken care of, then we're happy. Yeah. But if they're going to take it all away and just have full control, yeah. I don't see uh, happy people. I, I think there was a time in history where politicians were scared of the people. Yeah. Now it's uh, the other way Oh, around. it's definitely the opposite yeah, because there's yeah. too many of them now. Yeah. Well, they have too much they have too much power. They, they and can do too much to you. Like they can lock you away just for anything. Yeah, yeah. We got we to be careful what you say. They they might be listening. I think so. Yeah. I think I, I I you know what? I hope they're listening because God damn it, I need you guys to smarten up and do something better because this isn't working anymore. Yeah. Um, but Rick, dude, this was so much fun, man. Absolutely. Thank yeah, you for thank me. you for coming on, brother. Absolutely. Oh my God. So. Um, what, what, what episode is this? So I was this, one, and this is number what? Well, you were episode... It was like three? 99. I think I started recording when I started getting close to the hundreds. Okay. Right? I think so. So if I, if I remember correct, you were like 95, 96. I'll put the link in this video. So if you guys want to watch his original podcast that we did... Um, because I believe uh, Lucas was like 98. So it was right around that 90-ish okay. area when I started uh, doing guests. It was about two years in. Yeah. So, and then, and then ever since then, I've been so thankful because at the end of the day, you really did open up this door. You know, I was super nervous to do it. I didn't know what to anticipate. I planned real hard for that podcast. And now I've learned that planning and writing stuff down and all of that, it just, it just seemed more mm, structured, mm. you know? And, and, and that's why I started doing it like this more. Let's make it natural. Like yeah. It's a conversation it, it, and feels a little bit more natural. It's yeah. a little we, bit more we go fun. Off track, we come back. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. It's just, it's, it, it, it's just more natural of a conversation yeah. and, 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 you know, it, if it wasn't for you coming on for the first time, I don't know if I'd be doing what I'm doing today with the podcast. So for that, I also thank you. Oh, I don't think you would have figured Dude, it out. But I, I'm probably, thank but I needed help and I needed assistance. And I was lucky enough to have such a good group of people that wanted to help me build something that I, 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 I needed to build. And, and, and all of you coming back on and, being here for the first time, I mean, I, I, I just, it's been amazing. Yeah. It's been ab absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, working with you, training with you, talking to you, you know, all of this stuff. And, and, and for me, 
you know, I'm like, I'm like a little kid on Christmas. I'm just so excited. And, and I, as long as we're all having a good time, I think that's the most important part because at the end of the day, these are just conversations, you know, there is some truth to a lot of the stuff that we said, but there's also a lot of, uh, uh, uh stories in there as well. And whether or not we're going to get to the end of the story or figure any of this out for real, I don't know, but I'm having fun while I'm here, and right. that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to have some fun. Enjoy the journey, right? That, that's, yeah, that's because the, you got to remember, the, the story that you're writing, is it's all the moments in between. Mm -hmm. It's not the big moments. It's not the bad moments. It's, it's all thing. of it. It's yeah. all of it. In between, all the people you meet, all the relationships you build, all the downfalls, upfalls, all of it. It's, it that's your story, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and this is my story and I'm glad that I, I get to share it with you. Yeah. You know, so I really do thank you for coming back on Rick. Thank you, man. Yeah. No problem at all. Let's, uh, let's close this out. So everybody out there, um, I hope you have <clears throat> an enjoyable Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And as always, I will talk to you later. later.